How would I describe Sean Cameron? He's like kind of like the misunderstood guy. He has a heart of gold, but not everyone sees that, you know? It's almost like he has terrible luck, like the worst luck in the world. Morning, people. I would like you to meet Sean Cameron. He was here for a few months last year before he uh, moved up north. Uh, why don't you tell the class a little bit about yourself? No. Okay, well, um, maybe once you've settled in. Hi, my name is Daniel Clark, and I played Sean Cameron on Degrassi. People think I'm dangerous, that I'm a freak. So what? Screw them. When I went in for my audition, I was paranoid and, like, scared. It took a lot to even get into character, you know, to even become Sean on day one. I remember I was nervous and so like I overplayed it almost like a tough guy and it like worked, you know what I mean, for the character. And that was something that came organically from me being afraid in the room, you know? And looking back on that, it was like, wow, it worked. But, you know, I, I thought I bombed it. I thought I wasn't gonna get the part. Like, I thought that, you know, they were gonna pick somebody else, but I, I ended up lucking out, they loved it. And, you know, Sean started on the show. Poetry is crime. No idea how to rhyme. Stupid waste of time. <laughs> A poem about hating poetry. You know, he always gets into trouble, and it's always like he regrets what he does after he does it, because I think he's more moral, like, and, and driven and, and real than we give him credit for. So I think, like, he was, like, a really interesting character to play. I think a lot of people definitely related to that, to being like either misunderstood or, you know, not really knowing where they fit in. You know, I feel like Sean had a lot of that too. So I, I tried my best to like be this Sean guy that uh, someone could think was believable as a character. It could be like, yeah, that could definitely be me or yeah, that definitely happened. Favorite moments for Sean in the show. On a serious note, like the, the Time Stand Still episode was probably my favorite, definitely top three of the whole show, but one of the, the strongest ones for him because it was such a real issue that, you know, even before we shot it, uh, while we were shooting it, and then thereafter, it, it was just something that we deal with all the time. Just put the gun down, okay? Anything else is just gonna make your life worse. Can't get any worse. I know. We'll figure it all out, okay? Figure this all out. It's too late. No. You already shot someone. It was something that I thought we really got right, like conveying what something like that would be like at your school. You know, I think that was one of my favorite moments for him because that kind of showed that he was willing to sacrifice at least something um, in order to stop something that was like really terrible. And I think a lot of people would have done that as well. You know, a lot of people would do that. So I think that was a great uh, moment for him. The relationship with Emma. Um, that's, I mean, like, it was like one of the original, like, Degrassi moments, right? Like, I think they call it Sema, is like what, like, in fandom, they, they call the relationship. And it was awesome, because uh, we got along so well, you know? Like, it made sense. That was kind of endgame. So it's Friday. Yeah. Um, do you, do you have any plans? No. Okay, well, <clears throat> maybe we could hang out sure all right cool well i'll see you you know at the end he goes off uh and joins the military and it kind of puts a pause on their relationship and you know a lot of people wonder like what if you know like what would happen if he had come back if they had ended up together if they were the real end game you know it was like the one that got away probably for him but who knows I thought maybe we could uh, get a new photo of us. Show my platoon. Of course. Squeeze in close. 
You know, in the first few years, I don't know if we really knew the impact of what Degrassi, you know, the impact of the show, what it would have on the audiences and on culture. It's kind of like, I never realized that it would still have like staying power today, right? Like you you would think that a lot of shows um, kind of go away, but if there is like a really strong following with the show, like not just super fans, but people who are reintroduced to the show for the for, for either, you know, when they're growing up and they have a new perspective or people for the first time who are even younger. I get a lot of people who reach out and they say, I'm watching this for the first time with my daughter who's now that age. Um, it's kind of interesting to think of because you're thinking 10, 15, 20 years ago that a lot of these issues are still relevant today and that the show, at least uh, for these people, doesn't feel dated, like they, it still feels relevant. If Degrassi were to come back today, where do I think Sean would be? Um, I think he would be back, back in Canada. Um, I don't know, you always wonder what he would do with his life that when he was an adult, right? I think maybe like, like a detective or something like that, like someone who's trying to like make up for some thing he did or like, you know, make up for lost time and be the good guy, you know? Something like that he might gravitate to. Either that or he's working in an auto shop. <laughs> it would be one of the two.